Here's some more examples on how to do factoring uh, for simple trinomials. And again, simple trinomials are the type where the square term, x square and y square terms, uh, have a 1 in front of them. So again, if you're going to do uh, factoring, you want to end up with something like this, starting with something like this. But in other words, you're going to write a trinomial like this in terms of the product of two binomials. So I always start with putting down the parentheses. And again, since it's a simple trinomial with an x squared by itself, you know that you're going to need an x and an x here because x times x will give you x squared. Now, on the signs, the last term here is negative. And the only way you can get a negative is by multiplying a positive and a negative. That means you need a positive and a negative here. And finally, you're looking for two numbers to put in here such that when you multiply them, you get 90, and when you add them, you get a positive 1. Since one is positive and the other one is negative, that means the positive number has to be one bigger than the negative number. So what multiplies together gives you 90, and the two numbers are two apart, and it looks like a positive 10 and a negative 9 will do the trick, because nine, a negative 9 times 10 is negative 90, and 10 plus negative 9 is a positive 1. So that's the answer. Looking at the next one, again, you're going to need two sets of parentheses. You're going to need a y and a y, because y times y gives you y squared. As far as the signs are concerned, when you multiply these two together, you get a positive number, but when you add them together, you get a negative number. And the only way that can happen is if they're both negative, because a negative times a negative will give you a positive, and they add together to give you a negative number. Now you need two numbers. When you multiply them together, they give you a 3, and when you add them together, a negative 4. So 1 times 3 is 3, and when you add them, you get 4. That's the answer. So you need a 1 and a 3. Looking at the next one, we have a bit of a problem. First of all, they're not in the right order, so you may want to rewrite that problem, putting all the terms in the right order. So put the x squared first, minus x squared, plus x, plus 56. All right, now at least they're in the right order. But you have a negative in front of the x squared term, and I recommend that you don't leave it like that. So you're going to factor out a negative 1. When you do that, you write negative 1 times, changing all the signs here, gives you a positive x squared, a minus x, and a minus 56. Now you go ahead and factor the rest there. Again, the same principle holds. You do have to keep carrying the negative 1, and it's probably not a bad idea to put the equal sign there so that you indicate to yourself that Nothing has changed, you just put it into a different form. You need your two sets of parentheses. Since you have an x squared here, you will need an x and an x. The sign there is negative. The only way to get a negative when you multiply these two together is to have a positive and a negative sign here. And then, of course, when you add them, you get a negative 1. So you're looking for two numbers, and when you multiply them together, you get a 56. When you add them together, you get a negative 1. So that means they need to be one apart, and the negative one is bigger. So how about a negative 8 and a positive 7? That works, because 8 times 7 is 56, and if you add them together, you get negative 1. So there's your answer. Now what you could do is you can multiply this negative 1 back into either here or here. So when we do that, we could write it as a negative x minus 7 multiplied times an x minus 8. And so at least that way you get rid of the negative 1. And that keeps you from having to work with the difficulty of having a negative number there.